Ever since I can remember, I have been obsessed with efficiency. Uh, or actually, I guess even before I can remember, because I was born three weeks early. <laughs> so apparently, even in the womb, I was like, who needs a full nine months? I'm ready to go right now. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, and that efficiency mindset worked for me all the time. It's what I was always obsessed with. I remember in the fifth grade, uh, I got so excited when I discovered how to load and unload the dishwasher more efficiently. Uh, I built a 10-point plan that described all the things that you needed to do. And number one on that plan was that when you're loading the dishwasher, you put all of the like silverware together. On the unload, you save about 20 seconds because all of the silverware is immediately in. Um, <laughs> When I was in high school, I decided and realized that for me, being smart wasn't getting 100%. Being smart was getting a 93%. Because a 93% was the lowest grade you could get and still get a full A. <laughs> <laughs> if you got a 92, then it was a 3.7 A minus, but if you got a 93, 4.0, and that's what I shot for. And it got to the point that if I got a 94, 95, or, you know, heaven forbid, a 100%, I was upset. Because it meant that I did more work than I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> I studied harder, or did more homework, or whatever. My first job uh, that I had was as a, uh, a cashier at a store called Meyer in the Midwest. It's kind of like a Walmart or a grocery store. And I was hired as a cashier because I got paid more, but I always wanted to be on carts. I always wanted to be out there the one pushing carts, because as a cashier, you were beholden to the cash register. Like, no matter how efficiently you scanned the groceries, you had to stand there and wait for customers to come by. But as a cart pusher, you control your own destiny. <laughs> the two rules as a cart pusher were that one, you had to have enough carts for all of the customers, and two, you had to make sure that there's no kind of errant carts out about in the, in the parking lot. And so, what I discovered is that if you worked really hard for 15 minutes, you could then take like 45 minutes to do whatever you wanted because they had to accumulate carts in the parking lot. And so me and my friends would schedule our work shifts together. We'd work really hard for 15 minutes, and then we'd go off to the break room and watch Jeopardy. <laughs> or uh, we'd go to the kids' play area, and they had one movie that you could see, so we would watch it, and it was Dunstan Checks In. So, uh, beautiful movie starring Jason Alexander and an orangutan. <laughs> Into our own games uh, that we would play, like we would go and we would walk around the outside of the store and we'd play a game called Kick the Rock, which involved us walking around the store kicking a rock. <laughs> I guess all my brain power was devoted to efficiencies, not clever games. To play. Uh, and all that worked very well for me. When I was in uh, high school, I did uh, well in terms of classes and stuff. I um, uh, graduated in the top 1% of my class, got an academic scholarship, uh, all of that good stuff. And I go into college, and that continued to work for me for the most part. Uh, in addition to being uh, an academic person in college, I also became a resident advisor, an RA. And I, wanted, I wish I could stand up here and tell you that it was because I wanted to be a leader in the community, or I wanted to give back to the university. But the truth of the matter is that RAs got room and board. So if I got room and board and already had a tuition scholarship, I was like, great, I can go to school for free, which is fantastic. And so I become an RA, and um, as an RA, I was put into a freshman building, and I was paired with a co-RA. Her name was Amy. Um, well, her name is still Amy. She's still with us. Amy, and was Amy at the time. Uh, and we were paired together. I was responsible for the guys on the floor. She was responsible for the girls. So we would do a lot of joint programming. And if I am the stereotypical computer introverted geek, which I am, uh, skinny body, nasally voice, allergy to the sun, all of the stereotypes of computer science geek, she was like the stereotypical mother hen. She was like very caring. She put other people before herself. She cared more about her residence than she did in her academic career. And we actually worked pretty well together because she would do all the relationship type stuff and I would do like paperwork, which was a good relationship for me because I could get through it efficiently. <laughs> and so one day Amy decides that she wants to do a floor program together, you know, get all both the guys and the girls together. And she's like, we should do a floor dinner. And I am like, sweet. 
We'll take all the residents, we'll go to the cafeteria, we'll pay for it via meal swipe, and we'll be good to go. Easy peasy program. She's like, no, I want to cook dinner for our residents. Like, well, that seems a lot less efficient. <laughs> You're the relationship person, we'll do it. She decides on spaghetti, and I should let you know that at this point, uh, and in many ways I still feel this way, is that cooking isn't very efficient, at least for me, because I have no idea what I'm doing. At this point, I only ever cooked pizza rolls in a microwave and Pop-Tarts just actually out of the bag. I didn't even toast it. Straight Pop-Tarts. And so we cook spaghetti, and Amy is running around doing everything. She's putting the garlic bread in, she's making the salad, she's like putting the actual spaghetti into the water and stuff. And I'm watching her, trying to see if I can help somehow. And she's like, can you please put on like another pot of spaghetti? I was like, yes, I can do that. Because I watched her do it. She took the pot, she filled it up with water, she put the uh, she. Uh, boiled it, then she put the spaghetti in, and she was good to go. And so I watched that, and I saw, not only did I see it, but yes, I can do that, but I can do it more efficiently. <laughs> so I took the pot of water, I put the water in it, I put it onto the stove, immediately the spaghetti goes in, and then I turn on the burner. And as the gas has let you know, if you don't know anything about spaghetti, that is wrong. <laughs> don't do that. And Amy flipped out. She was upset. And this was like the first time she had ever been mad at me. She comes over and she's like, no, Drew, what are you doing? You can't do that. You can't put the spaghetti in first like that. You have to let the water. Oh, my God. She dumps out everything and she starts over. And basically, I was relegated to like standing back and watching for the rest of the day. <laughs> So it comes time to clean up, all of our residents have left, and I go and I'm talking a little bit with Amy, and I can sense that she's still mad at me. Mostly because she said, I'm still mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't understand, like, I, I'm sorry, I, I've never come to get She's like, yes, the problem is that you always do that. And I was like, how can I always do that if this is the first time we've ever come to <laughs> And she's like, no, I'm not talking about just the spaghetti. I'm talking about you trying to take shortcuts. You trying to spend the least amount of time possible doing these things and trying to get the biggest amount of results or whatever. You always take shortcuts with your residents, with the hall director, and with me. You take shortcuts. And that hit me hard. It's like I never really thought about it, but she was right. I had been treating my role as an RA and these relationships that I had as a task list. It was I was talking to residents because I could check it off and say, hey, I'm a good RA. I talked to so-and-so today. I was calling my mom, not to really talk to her and let her know how my day went, but more so that she wouldn't think that I was kidnapped or dead. So that was my mom's mindset. So I, I had this epiphany, and if you are familiar with the conscious competency learning model, uh, it says that we go through four stages whenever we're learning a new skill. The first stage is that we're unconsciously incompetent. So we're not even aware that we can't do something, and that's how I was with people. That moment with spaghetti with Amy, I finally became consciously incompetent. Which is a good spot to be in because you're at least aware that you can't do something. Unfortunately, there aren't that many classes on teaching an introverted computer youth like me on how to be more human. <laughs> but fortunately, at that same time that I was an RA, I was also doing something brand new to me, this thing that we call improvisation. A good friend of mine that I went to school with decided that he wanted to start an improv comedy group, and so we did. In the spirit of yes and, which we knew nothing about, we're like, sure, we'll do it. We don't know what we're doing, but we'll do it. We'll get together. We'll watch Who's Line Is It Anyway, try to repeat what we saw in the basement somewhere, and go. And then later, I got the, the privilege of learning from a number of great people in this room when I started to do comedy sports. And I learned from those experiences actually how to be better with people. The same skills that we use as improvisers are what we need to use as people to connect with each other. Things like listening to really understand the other person, or treating them like a genius and a poet and really respecting them as a person. Being patient and not just going for the easy joke at the top of the scene, but actually building something together. And of course, this most important idea of yes and. So what's wrong with things? What's right with things? What can we do? How can we build and work together? Because I had always been that type of person where it was like, oh, if you explain something to me, I will either tell you what's wrong with it and why it's wrong, or I will try to fix it for you, which for all of my romantic relationships up to that point is always a bad idea. <laughs> Someone is, is venting to you, they don't want you to say, oh, well, clearly all you have to do is X, Y, and Z. They want you to just listen and then build together with them in a yes and mindset. And so I finally learned that. And I can tell you that I'm not at the unconscious competence part yet. I still have moments where I think about things being inefficient 
I uh, had a chance to meet up with Amy uh, not too long ago when I was doing the show back in Columbus, and uh, we got together and we talked, and I can tell you it was not an efficient conversation. Uh, we talked for about two hours, which included about 20 minutes of her talking about a dog that she might get. <laughs> From that, I've realized that yeah, you can't be efficient with people. You can't try to find the least amount of time to spend with them to get the most amount of results. But instead, using the same code improvisation, these things that we've learned, instead of being efficient with people, you have to be effective with people. Thank you.